Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the West Bromwich career mode. Yep, it's your boy John Hall 9 and we've got another episode with the baggies. But we've got a lot to go through this episode, so I'm trying to keep this talk short and simple. Basically, Champions League with through, beating Real Madrid. And after round of 16 away, you'll find out who my opponent is later on. Premier League with first, but... Not gonna lie, that's gonna be the least of my problems. But the chat, Carabok at the EFL Cup, whatever the fuck it's called, I can't lie, sorry. We're in the semi finals against Leeds United, a team that I've never beaten. So this could be really, really personal. And another trip to Wembley with yours truly, the Baggies, looking good. But the squad, don't get me wrong, it is going great. Courtois, keep it up, great work. But what did I say before? Oh, yeah, that's it, Iago has been absolutely shocking and I'm too scared what the problem is. Don't get me wrong, he's 34 years old, so maybe his prime is starting to get go now. Or that the 100k contract that I gave him has actually gone to his head. You don't know really, it's really 50-50. So hopefully in this episode he starts scoring because we desperately need those goals. Yes, it is January and I do have £123 million, so I don't want to make any crucial signs because you know the saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. That's pretty much my motto. Well, that changed. Yep, yeah, token, a player we brought in season number one, was sick and tired waiting on the bench for Cucurella. So he went for £28 million. So afterwards, I offered £13 million for a former Real Madrid defender. Yes, he's getting on in age, but I only need him for rotation. Nothing crucial. Ucarella is doing a great job with that left back role. So, Ferland Mendy, welcome to West Bromwich Albion. Yeah, no, squad hasn't changed one bit. I'm not going to make any crucial changes. I just want to upgrade their reserves, some substitutes, because we're going to be playing a lot, a lot, a lot of games. In today's episode and speaking of me rambling let's get on to those games with the match highlights and we're going to start things off with the grudge match of the ages west bromwich albion versus leeds united in the efl cup semi-finals if you don't know my history between me and leeds i've mentioned it multiple times but the main one the championship playoff finals in season number one leeds embarrassed me on that day Causing us to have another season in the championship. Times have changed for us too. And looking at my squad, it's already for payback time. The first leg ended 1-1 sadly. So everyone had to be on their top game. Including my defence. Well, let's just say they were solid like a rock. If you smell what the rock is cooking. But how did up forwards go? Hmm, I see Fatty on the ball as he unlocked the game having like 4D vision or whatever. With literally an IQ, misses the pass to Ezzy but into Diego and he had to score that tapping. It was so easy not to. As yes, we've got that lead but I want to add more pressure. And wait a minute, is that the King's Men's Trumpet? Yes, as literally Adju Fatty was charging at the Leeds United's defence. They were panicking, they didn't know what to do, and Fatty, well, he got the ball in the back of the net. It's another one, but no, I want another one. And as he agreed, as literally his shot, well, keeper had nothing to do but pick it up at the back of the net. But I wanted to add a more, you know, add a little salt to the wounds. And I know just the man, as Serge Gnabry done a fantastic shot near post. And yes, he did apply that salt onto Leeds United. Utterly about you know what? No, I haven't embarrassed them enough. On another one, please. There we go, much better. As we advance to another trip to Wembley. But more importantly, round of 16 of the Champions League has come. As at the Hawthorns, we take on Juventus. Oh, this is going to be a tricky one. The first leg, yes, ended 1-1. So I couldn't get up anything out of the old lady. So when they came to the Hawthorns though, I have to come up with a plan. And I know just the man. Yes, you see Iago. He's back. It seems like he's on his prime right here. As he scores for West Bromwich Albion. Giving us the lead against Juventus. And Juventus seems shooken up. Literally, they were actually defending like old ladies as they were falling apart. As literally Fatty shot 
through the defender, past the goalkeeper, and that's another goal for West Bromwich Albion, adding more and more and more. So what did Juventus' defence do? They utterly panicked, as literally an utter foul, and afterwards, Diego had the chance to score a free kick. And did he take his chance? Oh yeah, bloody well indeed. That's another goal, but I was going to end it just like that. But until afterwards, I saw a corner. It went straight to Kamara. Tap, whack. I, I can't, I can't describe that. That is absolutely amazing. Words can't describe what Kamara just did against uh, Juventus. Holy fuck. That was diabolical. And to following up the misery upon Juventus, Josh Maggia out of all people got the fifth goal for us. Absolutely obliterating Juventus and securing quarterfinals for your boys, the Baggies. And that quarter, that opponent was RB Salzburg out of all the teams. Well, I was going to be surprised, but then again, six years and you see West Bromwich Albion in a Champions League quarterfinals. Yeah, anything could happen. The team we've got, we easily beat them 2-0 at Austria. But at the Hawthorns, though, I decided to play a little game with them. Hello. Do you want to play a game? A little bit of a 1-2. As yes, Fatih and Kessie have played a 1-2. Fatih across the end. And Eze literally flying like he's on wings. Yes, Eze got a goal to make it 3-0. And then afterwards, Fatty, he wasn't only spotting out the cross. As he spotted out Kiego, Kiego runs past. And afterwards, the Japanese GOAT secures us into Champions League semi-finals for West Bromwich Albion. And that Champions League semi-finals was against Borussia Dortmund. I've got a lot of respect for B for B, but this is very tense for me. I'm not going to lie. You could say we could be put under pressure. 2-2 at their amazing stadium, but we have to take it to the Hawthorns. And Borussia Dortmund did bring the game close, as literally made a good save at a Courtois. But the real impact of that game was Tomori, as he was literally defending for his life, stopping any Borussia Dortmund attack coming through. And that led to a chance for a counter-attack. Yes, spot on the run right here, as Madaweke had the IQ, had the vision, spotted it to Iago, and Iago scores. Getting the crucial goal against Borussia Dortmund. 3-2. It's looking great, but we could do a lot better than great right here. As Kiego spotted into Lewis, our right back, who then plays it across to Eze. And Eze gets in there. It's another goal for West Bromwich Albion. As I was looking good, the West Brom fans were looking at tickets, flight, to get the day off work. And then they got too excited as yes, Borussia Dortmund did score from a counter-attack and a little tap in from Hoiberg and then it got a lot worse. As a corner comes in, it gets deflected off the face of Lewis and yes, Antonio Silva got a goal. It's all a level. We, I got too excited and my team utterly crumbled as it's 2-2 yet again. Uh, so I have to do everything to get another goal. Borussia Dortmund were doing the same, which led to counter-attacks. Kiego had a good chance of a header, but it was not to be. And afterwards, we had another chance. Played it into Eze, and he got taken down in the box. I was shocked, because after six long seasons, this is my first ever penalty in this game. Yes, my first ever penalty. And a red card as well. So the pressure was on Kessier to score my first ever penalty. Did he deliver? Top left corner he delivered, all right. As a crucial goal, which could send West Bromwich Albion to the Champions League finals. And with the 90 minutes, Borussia Dortmund, they were knackered. They were exhausted as the breakaway header got deflected. But Josh Madger had to score the goal to send West Bromwich Albion to the Champions League finals. But with one game remaining in the Premier League, all we had to do was get a win. And then guess what? We're Premier League champions. Easy enough. Thanks to Eze, we did make it 1-0. And then afterwards, Fulham made it 1-1, which eh, I don't really mind. Because we were just flying in with the goals. It was pretty much an easy day at the office. We had a corner, came in and... Oh, fuck. Oh, well, at least we won. And do we get to see the Premier League trophy? Nope. No, we don't. Oh, I swear this game's an absolute joke. 
Well, let's go on to the live game then. Now, I wasn't really going to play this game as a live game, but I saw my opponent and I'm like, oh yeah, we're definitely playing this as a live game. West Brom versus Aston Villa in the EFL Cup Finals. It's another tro trophy, yes, and I don't know if we're going to see this one or not. That's going to be the real question. But I don't know if you remembered, since season number one, my first goal was to take out the rest of the Birmingham club, the Birmingham trio. And I managed to do. And look how we've excelled. Like, is it Champions League football? We've won the Premier League. And, well, hopefully we can win the EFL Cup against Aston Villa. Let's do this. Boys coming out here live. Wembley, it's come in a bit of a positive state, you know. We've beaten so many teams. We've got, we've got cup finals. We've won so many trophies. And yet the EFL Cup, I've never won it in FC24 so far. Hopefully I can do it today against our bitter rivals, Aston Villa. Come on, you baggies! Aston Villa got a throw right here. Now, in my area and all, this is kind of scary. So, lays it across. Caravinga, trying to spot the pass. Got pass. No. Oh, no. Spots the pass brilliantly! And Courtois made himself big like a prayer mantis. Puts off the Aston Villa the attack and literally pulled off a fantastic save. Brilliant. Inroy Henry's absolutely triggered from that. Got himself a corner though. And we've got to really catch him where it hurts. And header! Oh my god! Did that get off the line? And Courtois saved it. We were so lucky not to concede a goal right there. Aston Villa on the attack again. Plays it across. Jackson out of all people now. Villa really trying to boost their attack with another goal. The shot! Good save from Courtois. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. My attack has shown nothing and Aston Villa looked like they deserve to be in the Champions League. Comes in, it's affected, and Courtois pulls off another great save. Bloody hell. Through balls, and Aston Villa yet again. It's another bloody attack. Jackson, come on, tackle him. Amore couldn't. Lewis couldn't. Tackle him, shot, and it's another save. Seriously, man, we are on the losing boot right here. Half time, bloody thank goodness for that. We've been on the losing half, I'm not going to lie, we've been absolutely poor at Wembley. I'm very surprised Aston Villa have not taken the lead here. Thanks to Courtois, this could have been a whole different story. 45 minutes, we've got to change this. Anzu Fati makes a great run, he's got two Villa defenders right next to him. Dribbles round, trying to spot the pass, Ezzy's in open space, into Ezzy, Ezzy, touch, shot, and it's a good save. But you know what, that's much better, applying the pressure on Aston Villa with our first chance of the game. Jackson on the ball, plays it across, now again, quick passing from Aston Villa, they, they can smell blood in the war, it's an over chance and Courtois saves us yet again, literally, he's the captain, oh my god, we're getting on the counter, come on, get a break and we're hurt, Ezzy on the ball, trying his best, where is Kiego, come on Moy, come on, there he is, through balls and come on my man, for Japan, get in! Have against the run of play, that's all I'm saying, folks. We're 1-0 up at Wembley. They didn't see it coming. As soon as Courtois saves us yet again, we went up with our signature counter-attack and we've got the 1-2-3, and more importantly, the one goal. Back to the game. Villa on another attack. Through balls it now to Barry. Oh, no, don't let Barry score. I've all played a Villa player. Oh, Villa, I don't know. I wouldn't give a damn, really. I should really focus. It's literally, they're drawing my right back away. Plays it across. It's a scramble. Scramble! Courtois, get rid of it! Jesus Christ. Oh, no, they got it again. It's another chance, but this time for Barry. Tackle him! For God's sake, man, this team does not... Oh, come on! No! No, get to vending. Get rid... Oh, my fucking God. Get rid of it now. Jackson! Courtois saves us yet again. Oh, my God. <sighs> It's so frustrating seeing this because I'm I know what to do. Ah, oh, but it's the corner, goalkeepers up and all. Gonna come in right here. Courtois punch it away. It's another corner for Aston Villa. The pressure, it's piling on us, and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like we're gonna bloody break. Corner comes in, headed away from Josh Maggia. Goalkeeper off his line, and it's Andrew Fatty. Can he do something? Tries through, balls it. Ezzy, he's got to take the first time. It's going to go in. It's going to go in. Ah! You can't write this. Hug me, my brother. Holy shit. What a goal from Ezzy. Yes, 
that's the keeper who's off his line. But the shot. Oh, that curl. Oh, that's probably the greatest goal ever scored at Wembley. Oh, that's absolutely beautiful. And that's just what it's the EFL Cup. Full time blow. I'm still shocked. That goal was absolutely fucking amazing. I'm sorry. Ezzy with the goal, securing us the trophy right here. It's good scenes all around. Beating our rivals, they're absolutely pissed. And if I was a Villa fan at Wembley, watching that performance, knowing that he should have won, and yet they've lost 2-0 to us, I'll freaking be pissed. But you know what? EFL Cup trophy, get in there. Hopefully that gives us a motiv motivation for Champions League. But you know what? That's fucking amazing. I'm sorry for swearing too much, but that goal was out of this world. Here it is boys, Champions League Finals against Milan. Oh boy, I am absolutely nervous as a wreck, literally. And it didn't help right here because the main talking point of this game is Braithwaite. He's injured, he can't play in the Champions League Finals. That game against Everton took him out of the competition, which is an absolute blow. And I've got to rely on Mark Gay out of all players to come in. So... This is going to be one crucial game for yours truly, the Baggies. Let's get into it. Well, after six long seasons, we're here at Champions League Finals. But playing in the Champions League Finals and winning it are two different things. We've been through a lot, you'd know that. I would like to give you a motivational speech. But it's not the time. Oh, it's time to play football and get the win against Milan. Come on, you buggies! Milan on the counter attack right here. And come on, Tomore. You can't forgive your former teammates right here. Luca Romero. Got a lot of history with him. The shot and caught to our Cesar. He's been in a lot of champions. Why have you put Ezzy? I'm not going to lie, that's racist as fuck. Joe Linton trying to duke me, and he has absolutely done me right there. Theo Hernandez. Too far forward, which I kind of like because this. I'm mad awake. Why are you tackling? Rico Lu or Lewis, sorry, I can not get the name pronunciation. Tomorrow, plays it across to Mark Gay. Gay spots Ezzy, who's on a yellow card. I don't know why. Through balls it. Kiego, Kiego's done his man. Come on, man. Come on, off the post. Get in there. And in Germany, we strike first from the man who's from Japan. Kiego 1 0 in the Champions League finals. All right, come on. Eze wins the ball brilliantly. Radueke plays it bad to Eze now. And even though red shirt's Everick, Diego on the ball. Through balls it to Madueke. He's gone and down the shot. Should have scored. Probably should have gone near post or should have never sold Linton. There were the two mistakes I've made right there. As oh, I look like the keeper got a hand to it. I'm just saying. Oh, well. Goal kick for Milan. And you know what? We've got off to the great start possible, but we don't want to let that get to our heads. Ezzy lays it down to Madueke again. who's literally foul. Brilliant run past the defender. Literally plays it across. Diego, can he get the goal for Scott? Number two, it's a good save. Damn. Oh, that would have been so good if we got another goal. Diego went low, and the goalkeeper was on point to save it. Palm it away. Corner. Ezzy, come on. Whips it in. Tomore! Tomore gets goal number two for West Bromwich Albion. He's not celebrating because he has a lot of respect and love for Milan. But that is a crucial goal. We brought him off Milan for £75 million. Pounds, and he comes up and scores against them in the Champions League finals. As it's 2-0 to the Baggies. All right, here we go. Yeah, we've got two players on a free kick right in. I'm not sure about long ones, but I'll play across to Ezzy though. Shot and oh, just dipped over the bar. I wanted to try and go for a power shot. I didn't know why that wouldn't let me do one, but yeah, I'm not complaining too much. I'm 2 0 up in the Champions League finals. It's I can't let that get to my head. We've all seen the Borussia Dortmund game. But Milan is going to boot this ball long and long and out oh, headed into Kessier, who headed it down. To Madueke, who's literally, he's been ruining defenders since day one. He's doing it again, folks. Plays it across. Diego, oh, what a goal. What a fantastic goal. 3-0, he gets his bloody brace, but that goal was spectacular. An athletical kick beats the Milan goalkeeper. 
and we're three 0 up, and it's not even the first half. Here we go, another counter attack. Ezzy over the top through ball. Diego in the box. I dare you to foul me. I want another penalty. Oh, literally lovely dribbles. Go on, curls it, and it's a good save from the Milan goalkeeper, resorting in a corner. He's absolutely frustrated with his defenders as he they're literally let it through. It's not like they lost their best defender as the goalkeeper. Don't get me wrong, that's a fantastic save. Denying Kiego his hat trick. Now, corner comes in, whips it in. Header! Oh, Mark Gay was so close of getting on the score sheet. It's a good edit, don't get me wrong, but we've got ourselves another corner. Gonna whip this one in. Header again! But Tom couldn't. Sorry, my voice is broken. To absolute shreds. But literally, I've been screaming over the two goals. Corner number three, I think. Corner again! It's another save from the Milan goalkeeper. Through balls. Bruno Guimaraes now going to get their last chance in the game. The shot, Courtois saves. It's just, we're looking like we're going to keep a clean sheet here. Courtois looks like he's not going to be stopped. It's a brilliant save from the Belgian number one. He's played in many Champions League finals, but I'll tell you, oh, that's a great save. It's the last corner for Milan. And literally, they really need to get this in to have any comeback. Heads it away. Referee blows half time. What a performance. We're literally throwing everything at Milan. Literally, I'm getting the kitchen sink and lobbing it at the kitchen, at the goalkeeper, and it's working. Such a good performance from us right here. Putting Milan in their place. 3 0 up. Let's not let that get in our heads, and let's continue with the second half. And Cucurella dribbles, lovely dribble. Is literally going through right here like a man possessed. Plays it across to Kessier now. Spots a literally Kiego by himself. Down the Milan defenders. Easy goal. His third goal, can I say, as he makes it 4-0. That's the goal I need. Literally, Champions League secured. I'm confident enough to say that, I'll tell you. As he completes his hat-trick against Milan in a Champions League finals. Rafael Leon, good run from him right here. And to be fair, my players are on Coup's control, literally. I shouldn't be, but I kind of am. As literally, Joe Linton dribbles. Come on, get the ball off him. No, nope, failed to get the ball off him. 1-2. Into Rafael Leon. Come on, plays it across. Open space. It's a goal. And you know what? I'm not surprised because in this career mode, I always concede goals. That's been the main priority. And to be fair, conceding the goal in the Champions League finals is typical West Bromwich Albion. All right, they got themselves a free kick in a very, very got defensive area. Heads it down, Kessier, come on, plays across to Kamara. Can he introduce another Kibanger? Nope, he's going to make a good run though. Plays it across, Josh Madgett, you know what, I'm happy he scored. I took Kiego off just to let Josh Madgett have a chance up front and he gets a goal. Our main striker since season number one, he returns in season number six and he comes up with a goal. Full time blows and we've done it. We've done it. We've absolutely embarrassed Milan on the night. And Champions League goes to West Bromwich Albion. The baggies. Now, I'm absolutely nervous for this reason. is to see if we're going to get the trophy or is FC24 going to ruin this whole career, mate. And yet up, no, they've got the trophy. They've got the trophy. It's all good. It's all good. All right, I can celebrate now. Champions League. And I'll tell you what. It's been a hell of a run to get to this moment. But I have some players who've been with me since ages and they've absolutely produced some of the best performance ever. And you know what? Today, getting there, it's a day for West Bromwich Albion. Champions League, Champions of Europe. You can't say that you're the only Champions of Europe, Aston Villa, because we've done it now. West Bromwich Albion, get in. Okay, top goal scorers. Let's go for it. Kiego, 25. 34 years old. He's still getting 25 goals a season. It's brilliant from him. Eze, 24. Really, really been a good player for us this season. Afterwards, we've got John Swift for 17. 14 for Anzu Fati. 12 for Dyke. And also, 12 for Julian, who's been off the bench now and again. On to the assist. And we've got Eze with 17. 14 for Fati. 13 for John Swift. I can't believe we've done it. Champions League, wow. Before we talk about this squad, I have to go on to player of the season. And it's a no-brainer. It's Courtois, the goalkeeper. Absolutely brilliant. He's the step-up in goal I needed. And these saves alone proves it. 
He's been such a reliable goalkeeper for me. And if it weren't for him, I didn't think I'll get the Champions League finals or let alone win it. Yeah, no, that's better of the season. But this squad has been amazing compared to season number one. Uh, it was looking good. Don't get me wrong. We got had a good championship squad, but we built it to a Champions League winning squad. And you may recognize some still players like John Swift. Yeah, he got demoted to the bench, but he's still playing. But yes, we've managed to get the big achievement, the Champions League winning medals around all these players. And that, sadly, is going to be the end of the West Bromwich career mode. Yeah, I know, but every time I win the Champions League, it's got to be the end, I'm afraid. Thank you lot ever so much for joining me for six long seasons with the Baggies. Don't get me wrong, I've got a big career mode planned up next, but after this video is the goals of the season video. Tune in for that. But after that, we start a new journey. And I can't wait. I really can't look looking forward to this crib. Literally, my mouth is tingling over it. But for now, the West Bromwich Albion, thank you ever so much. And to everyone who's watched this series since season number one, thank you ever so much. If you enjoyed this career mode series, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more career mode content. And as always, I'll see you lot later. Seen enough things to lose hope. Every year I used to go.